Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Jonathan here with a video today that we're going to be focusing on another bit of AR software that I've been using for a little while called ReRender. So the guys at ReRender reached out to me. They were keen for me to try this amazing new uh, AI generation software. And I've been pretty impressed by the initial results I've had. So the great thing about the ReRender software, it can do multiple things. So think about um, sort of architects or real estate designers. You can basically create exterior or interior images from some kind of source image. You can also do uh, really effective things like style transfer. So if you want to kind of style transfer from a CGI or a sketch into a rendering, that's something that ReRender will do very nicely. There's also a built-in enhancement. Now I've seen that before in other software, but it's always nice to have it in the suite there too, as is the upscaling, uh, which allows you to take your images and upscale them to much better quality as well. Now there's some also some neat functions for editing. Um, I won't be looking at all of these functions today, but we'll jump in and see some of the really impressive results I got with this software in no time at all. Okay, so let's take a look at the first example. I'm just going to upload a picture of a scheme that I designed many years ago. This was for a small residential development of five homes. You can see all I really started with was what I call a white card architectural model. So this is the way the re-render interface works. You basically go through a series of steps and choose from either options or images um, and basically just select different options. So you can see that I'm just selecting things like the style, uh, the sky, the landscape, and you know things like season as well. So I quite like this. It makes it very easy instead of prompting. You know this is an alternative sort of method. It's a very visual sort of method of prompting, um, and it allows you to basically go through and select different stylistic attributes that you might quite like. So for this one, I'm going to select architectural material. Let's go for that, and basically let's now type in the prompt that we would like. So as well as all those uh, sort of details, if you like, that we've selected we can actually still refine our prompt. So let's type in a residential family homes with uh, English landscape. So that's where the project was based. I'm in England, of course, and landscape gardens. And basically that's it. Let's just click generate and see what happens. So what I do, I'll speed up the generation. Um, it's pretty quick. It only takes a few minutes, but boom, here we go. You can see that I've already created what looks like a very nice sort of selection of a different images. Uh, with this English landscape, sort of the, the architecture there as well. So I'm going to choose to upscale that image as required. So again, the really nice thing about having all of this in one software um, is that you don't have to kind of jump off to other bits of AI software as well. And as I say, it seems fairly rapid. So let's just see how this result comes out. Okay, so now we've upscaled, we can kind of like expand this. There's a very nice little comparison slider. Um, you'll notice that I think it has kept, you know, the form and the geometry, the, the main sort of trees, very, very accurate. But it has done some nice interpretation as well. And here we go. This is that first image just produced in no time at all. Now, what's also cool is once you've generated a still that you may be happy with, you can now basically move on to create a little video as well. So again, this is the first time I did this. And basically I'm just gonna select a nice zoom in function on the video and click generate. So it's gonna take a few moments and it will cost you kind of like a credit or two. Um, and you'll see here is the result of that image, that little animation essentially. Now, while this isn't perfect at this sort of speed, this is actually pretty impressive. So I could, if I wanted to probably upscale this as well, but here we go, here is the native video all produced pretty much in real time for you from that image. So now we're going to jump into a different project. Uh, this was one that I did back in 2006. It was a master planning project working with a really famous master planner, Nick Kuhn. Now this basically was the next stage of Wood Wharf, uh, which was adjacent to Canary Wharf down in London. So it's a pretty exciting project for me to work on. It was all modeled back in uh, the day in Vectorworks and rendered using Cinema 4D, using that kind of white card, uh, global illumination type modeling approach. So you can see that all I'm doing here is now just going through selecting some of the styles. There's a huge range of architectural styles that they've got here. Um, and you know, you can basically refine those as well. I'm gonna go for a night image this time. So I thought that'd be fun to try. 
Um, let's maybe try a different season. So we'll go for uh, summer this time. We'll go for a sky. And I think we'll go for kind of maybe a rainy sky. See how that kind of works. We'll go for a kind of landscape. Obviously, it's a cityscape. We want really kind of urban cityscape for this master plan. And I think we'll go for kind of, you know, maybe glass, something like that. Quite modern for these kind of new architecture and sort of steel and glass would seem to suit the mood for this image. So really interesting to try these different flavors of sort of um, detail, if you like. Finally, we work again to the prompting. And I'm still working on my prompting. It's something that I've been developing uh, some skills with. You can even use ChatGPT to help you, uh, you know, using AI to generate these prompts as well. But, you know, with a bit of practice, you'll get better and better at this too. Okay, so here we go. Nighttime a render of a master plan for the next phase of Canary Wharf in London. Let's go for it. Let's click generate. And we might speed up the uh, generation a bit, which I've done. And you can see, wow, it's produced some pretty awesome images of four different options for the mood. Now, I think this one works the best. So this is the one I'm going to choose to upscale. Again, once again, let's kind of upscale that image. We'll speed up the video just for this little section while it's upscaling. And here is one of the images that I basically chose earlier, just to review. And you can see that now I've got that nice little comparison slider. I can kind of move back and forward and just see how closely the geometry fits to the image that I fed the model. So I think you'll find that, you know, this has done some good interpretation. It may not be perfect. There's a couple of things I could spot. Um, but these four images are very, very nice overall. Um, I do actually like this first one. Um, so I think that's the one I'm going to go for. So let's choose to upscale this one. Now we've done that comparison. OK, so guys, you let me know what you think about using AI in your workflow. How have you uh, found AI to impact your architectural workflow so far? I'd be really interested to, to know. So you know, here's the interesting image. There's the uh, AI generated re-render. I think you'll agree, you know, it's a really interesting concept. So I really do like this one. I'm going to basically use that one to mix. Now what the mixer does, it basically overlays the two images. So you've got opacity control. So this is quite interesting. So I can download that image. And there was the, the sort of mixture, if you like. So it was almost like doing a two layers in Photoshop and playing around with the opacity. OK, there's also different strengths of AI. We've got precise, we've got balanced, and we've got a really creative approach. Let's go for something a bit more creative this time and see what happens. Um, you can notice that with the creativity slid up, it really does let loose. While these images are very, very nice indeed, very cool, they're nothing really like my original design. So do bear that in mind. You can be creative, but it's not going to match. OK, so once again for this project, I'm going to create a quick video. This time I'm going to go for a couple of credits on a 10 second video rather than a five second video. So, you know, it will cost you a bit more to do longer videos. I would expect to see these becoming longer and longer in the future as AI technology develops. I'm going to go for uh, different camera movements. I'm going to go for a slow tilt down, just sort of pan the camera down nicely and let's generate and see what happens. OK, so here we go. Here is our video already kind of uh, put together. And so we can now download that and let's review that in real time. So I really like the way the cars are moving with those sort of streaks of light. Um, you know, done a good job on the buildings and the water. And I think for the time taken, this has been pretty amazing to generate sort of a quick concept that might be something that I can kind of use or inspire one of my other CGI's. OK, so I'm going to do my third and final project now. Now, sticking to the theme of the white card render, uh, this was an eco uh, residential apartment set of projects I modelled up for a client many years ago, probably done in about 2007. So we're going to go through, we're going to select um, a couple of prompts here. Let's go through and select um, Sleek International. I do actually just want to see if I can change that. So if you go to the drop down, you'll notice way more options in here. So, you know, this is an apartment complex. So it makes it much more relevant for me. OK, so I think we'll go for um, eco-futurism. Not quite sure exactly how that will turn out, but there's certainly a lot of styles to choose from. OK, so let's go through once again and select some different skies. Um, I'm sure you can find a way to kind of mix these in and load these in. If not, I'm sure that will be a feature re-render will add at some point. It's a bit limited at the moment. We've just got those four seasons. I mean, seasons is fine. 
but things like skies you need more of those for sure okay we'll go through and i think for this one we'll just select a cloudy sky slightly different to the last one let's go for um a sort of landscape um maybe let's go for this kind of like probably a sort of countryside i think for this one and finally i'm going to go for the architectural style let's go for sort of glassy that's kind of an eco home once again let's put in our prompt now this prompt seems to be quite important so i think if you play around with the prompting as well as the added details you know it'd be really interesting to see what effects you guys get you'll be able to create a really kind of good set of comparisons now i didn't really have enough time to kind of really compare what the prompting was uh, creating for me so that's something i'll look to do in a future video for you i'm going to go for the precise render again i like that because it kind of really kind of captures the um kind of image that i've actually fed okay it can misinterpret a few things but you know overall boom there is the image pretty much rendered out with lots of glass. It's interpreted the timber and the environmental sort of uh, eco-friendly aspects of the green roof rather nicely too. And, you know, it's done a really, really good job at creating those images. So I like the different styles it's created. One of the things about this um, technology is, you know, it might just throw out some ideas of something that you hadn't yet considered. Here's a slightly different version. Um, on this one, it kind of added a few more solar panels that I would have liked. So I thought I'd just show you the animation for that one too. But basically, another little cool feature I like in the re-render software is that you have something called a workbench. Okay, so with the workbench, you can load in a bunch of source images, almost like a mood board, if you like. And um, it's nothing to stop you from then using those to process and sort of set up your AI re-renders. But basically what this will allow you to do is essentially create a sort of whole working board of some kind of concepts. Now this is quite a neat concept. I've not seen this done before in other software. Um, so, you know, loads of image generators out there where you can generate images and of course, montage them together in, in design or maybe Vectorworks. But this is quite a nice little concept that you can bring in the images and just montage them together in your workspace. And then you'll be able to kind of run the AI to actually kind of demonstrate how some of those options might look. So again, here's this eco home with a few more different sort of varieties of materials. And you can see that all of these are available to download. And here they are, you know, in this kind of nice big workspace presented together. So it seems like quite a nice little concept this. I'll be looking forward to uh, developing my ideas here a bit more and testing this out in the future again. You know, my view of this is the software seems like it's got a very nice user-friendly interface. So really appealing for, you know, not only designers, but kind of maybe industry professionals, estate agents, uh, real estate, or people who perhaps don't have the 3D visualization skills that, you know, main architects would have. So I do hope you've enjoyed the video on re-render. So do make sure you uh, take a look at the channel, subscribe and like the videos. It really helps me out, guys. And do make sure you check out my members-only section with some fantastic members-only content for you. Uh, also ad-free and music-free too. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.